Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, and it's good to be with you all on this Palm Sunday. And it's good to see your faces and feel your excitement. Today, for the sermonic theme, I'd like to use deeply rooted, deeply rooted. Taylor and his sisters came into the foster care system in 2003 due to being neglected by their drug-addicted parents. They were featured on TV in efforts to find them a family. Eventually, someone came to the part where they took all three and adopted them. But then, and this is not so uncommon, they decided to give Taylor back. He had what they call anger issues. Not long after this, his caseworker found him another supposedly loving family. But over time, the same thing kept happening. Families would take him, and families would return him. When you're not feeling lovable and you're up against someone loving you, that's a pretty scary thing, said his caseworker. The caseworker really felt bad for Taylor. He never got a chance really to develop his roots. He would be with the family, and just about when it seemed like his roots would, they would turn him back in. Families would wipe their hands of them. Davion, another kid in the foster care system, met Taylor in foster care. And both of them only wanted a family. Davion remembers from a young age just wanting to have a family that loved him. One day he was so desperate he stood before a church begging for a family to love him, begging for roots. They aired this video and got over 100,000 inquiries from St. Petersburg, Florida. A preacher and his family in Ohio were selected. His caseworker packed up his stuff, packed him a surprise snack bag, and they made the pilgrimage from Florida all the way to Ohio. But you know it, when things got tough, this family, too, returned him to the foster care system. Statistics show that a significant number of foster kids who are adopted get returned. As soon as things get tough, the adoptive home common pattern takes the kid back and drops them off. Roots are important. Roots play an important role in vegetation because there is a part of the plant that absorbs water and nutrients from the soil. But roots are not just important for vegetation. Roots are important for people. Roots connect us. They sustain us. Roots let us know we are not on this journey by ourselves. Roots guide us. Roots anchor us. A couple of weeks ago, we as a church had conversation number three. We come from so many different walks of life and experiences, but a repeated theme was this sense of connection, this sense of having skin in the game, this sense of this place meaning something, this sense of our values. All of that feeds us, guides us, and anchors us in a world that is changing so quickly. Here at United Church of Hyde Park, we are deeply rooted. This community and our faith, it roots us. This is where we enter the biblical text. On Palm Passion Sunday, we often hear about Judas betraying Jesus for an amount of money, a price. Before we get high and mighty, I wonder if there's a price in which we all forget our morals. There was a social media video going around asking, would you rather spend 10 minutes with Jesus or have $1 million to yourself. You probably could see the struggle here, amen? Money Trump, says one person. I have heard questions about how much one person could pay you to do something you wouldn't ordinarily do for nothing, suggesting that maybe, maybe we do have a price. If you could get paid well, would you support a certain candidate? It's been suggested that money during elections buys people who then persuade other people to vote the same way. In Chicago, sadly, we are close 
to the end of an election. It is a tight race, and we see politicians losing their scruples over money. We see people moonwalking on what they originally said. But what is our price? What would cost us, what would it cost us to lay down our values? Judas has chosen where his loyalty lies, but we shouldn't be so quick to think we are different. The bling bling, the money, the instant gratification, Judas wasn't the first to have a price, and he definitely hasn't been the last. Look at any critical moment, and the powers always try to find someone with a price. So Judas was connected, but he also wasn't deeply rooted. He had traveled around with Jesus' posse, but the movement had not marinated in his soul. And so when the opportunity came to temporarily get ahead, he took it. But we know that this would weigh on his soul. That saying will come back, what gains a human being to gain the whole world and lose their soul? Today, we will gather around a table. Metaphorically speaking, today is Communion Sunday. We will remember all the symbolism around this table. We will remember connections and our deep connection with the larger church. We even remember what Jesus remembered with his disciples as they were sitting around the table for what has been passionately called the Last Supper. At that table, they remembered the Passover. They remembered their liberation from Egypt. They were remembering their story, their ancestors, and in remembering, they remembered how they were connected to each other. Now, most of us in here wouldn't just be sitting with each other. And so that suggests that we are connected. That suggests that something draws us together today. Deep connections. We remember special events. We remember historical events. Some have told me, everyone, I'm going to test this out, remembers what they were doing on 9-11. How many of you remember what you were doing on 9-11? We remember critical events. We remember how our stories weave together. As the Last Supper, Jesus and his disciples remember just how far and deep their roots went together. In the making of Woman King, some of the actors were discussing what it was like to connect with the Dahomey women warriors. For Viola, there is this yearning and desire to know her connections. There's a part of her history she feels like she can never get back. The lady in the movie that plays her daughter is a South African native. And for her, she doesn't have this sense of not knowing her roots. For her, the movie is one of simply pride. She says, I already know where I came from. I know my people. I know my tribe. She was never separated from her land. There is an arch and confidence in her stride because her roots have never been interrupted. She knows who she is, and she knows her connections. Palm Sunday asks us to connect with our roots, to connect with our rich history, the story, to take a stand. Palm Sunday asks for us to know our connections, to remember tables, to remember our baptism, to remember our journey, to remember where it all started, to remember the prayers, to remember the day we came to United Church of Hyde Park, to remember the journey to remember this community. I know that each of us is better because of all of us. I love that illustration of the pencils. You take one pencil and you can break it. When you put a whole lot of pencils together, it is hard to break. That's the way it is with the body of Christ. That's the way it is with United Church of Hyde Park. We are stronger together than we are apart. Brian Stevenson of Just Mercy had given his life to be a lawyer to help men on death row in the South who didn't have appropriate representation. He knew this would cost him a family, a marriage, etc. He decided to dedicate himself to this totally. But let's talk about his roots. When he was growing up, he had a Christian grandmother, and his Christian grandmother made him feel special. And she would have talks with him, and he would sit, and he would just listen to her. He was in awe. He was mesmerized by his grandmother. 
And so one day his grandmother had the talk. And she said, I need you to promise me two things. One of those things was that he would never drink, that he would never consume alcohol. Well, one day his mother passed away, grandmother passed away, and him and his cousins were walking, and they had a six-pack, and they had some other stuff on them. And so when they got to their location, they started passing it out, and Brian says to them, I pass. And they're like, dude, what's up with you? And he was like, I pass. And then his cousin looks at him and says, oh... You didn't get that talk with grandma, did you? <laughs> she made you think you were special, didn't she? She had that talk with all of us. Even though Brian's bubble was bursted, the roots had been laid. And to this day, he's never, ever consumed alcohol. Remember today that we are more than what you see. You don't see roots, but you know they're there. You can't really see roots, but roots sustain us. Roots keep us going. Roots say, I can go on a little while longer. Roots say, Lord, be a fence all around me. Roots say that I am more with God on my side than without God. Roots say that God is for us, that God. Roots say that Jesus will never leave nor forsake us. Roots say, for God I live and God I will die. Roots remind us not only of who we are, but whose we are, who we belong to, who we are connected to. Today I began with a story about two boys that have been adopted by a caseworker. All over the world there are families that never really get a chance to develop roots because of money, even right over here. On 62nd and Woodlawn is a big high rise of transitional housing. I listened to Kim Fox one day share that they were constantly moving even as she was trying to get an education. There's a significant number of kids that move and don't have consistency. and They are not able to ever really develop roots. They're off to one place or the other. The caseworker says one day she knew what she had to do. An epiphany happened. She made arrangements to stop being the caseworker for Taylor. And she started working on getting Taylor into his, her own home. Now Taylor, she says, still had his anger issues. The mirror in the room didn't break itself. And he would get angry. But she would look at him and say, I'm not sending you away. When things happened, Taylor would pack his bags and get ready to go. And she would look at him and say, I'm not sending you anywhere. This is your home. Over a period of time, Taylor developed roots. And today he says, this is where I belong. Davion, the other kid that stood on TV and shared his story in a church, and got adopted by a preacher family, says things got really tough and really low. And one day when he didn't know what to do, he pulled out a piece of paper with the caseworker's name on it and her phone number. And he called her and he said, Ms. Going, I need help. She said she didn't have space, but she sold her home, bought another house, and took in one more child and created a space for two kids to develop roots. I say that the biggest thing she gave them was beyond a home, she gave them the opportunity to develop roots. And that's what we potentially do here. We not only are deeply rooted, but as a church, we provide the opportunity for people on their journey to stay a while and to develop roots. Taylor says, the best thing about my mom is she knows the worst about me, and she still loves me. I think potentially that's the best thing about church, that we see each other's flaws, we see each other's strengths, and we remain connected and deeply rooted with each other. May you during this Palm Sunday and all that you face, because there are hard days and there are good days, 
There are days when it rains, and there are days when the sunshine comes out. There are days when roots are pulled up, and then there are days when the rainbow comes out. But in all of it, I think what keeps us as a church, and what keeps us moving forward, is that we are deeply, deeply rooted. Amen.